Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer DeMud, and I am the Executive Director of the Manufacturing Growth Alliance. My career and passion has been to serve small manufacturers and businesses across the state. MGA is a membership-based organization that champions, serves, and advocates for small manufacturers. We provide services and connections to resources that drive solutions that make manufacturing in Michigan, the most competitive and prosperous in the nation. We talk with a lot of manufacturers and strive to partner with organizations that provide solutions to their pain points. Manufacturers have been asking about Industry 4.0 resources. They desire to learn more. They want to access Industry 4.0 tools and simply be engaged in the manufacturing evolution. Our presenter today has a lot of interesting insights and resources to share with you. Before I introduce the presenter, I have a few housekeeping items to share. All participants will be on mute until we close our conversation. We encourage questions and comments, so please type your questions in the chat box. I will monitor those questions and propose them to the presenter throughout our conversation. Also, the presentation today is about 30 minutes, so there'll be ample time to engage throughout the presentation and at the end of the presentation. Let's introduce our presenter. Dan is currently a consultant to a number of high-tech companies and hardware manufacturing and clean tech accelerators nationwide. He also leads the nation's first Automation Alley Industry 4.0 Accelerator supporting manufacturing technology firms globally. Dan also serves as the director of the Lawrence Technological University Centropolis Accelerator, a program that helps accelerate and scale small manufacturers and innovators of new hardware physical products. Dan frequently serves as an advisor judge, mentor, and committee member for regional and national accelerators and clean tech competitions. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today, Dan. Thanks, Jen. I appreciate it having you, and I'm grateful that Manufacturing Growth Alliance was allowing us the opportunity to kind of share with some of your members and network um, what we're seeing in the way of Industry 4.0 technology that we think is really compelling and that um, is really also, you know, practical to be of use for manufacturers big and small. So that's what I plan on covering today. Uh, but first, just a quick word about the Industry 4.0 Accelerator. Uh, Automation Alley's Industry 4.0 Accelerator is really a, a partnership between three organizations you see there in the bottom uh, part of the screen. It involves uh, my organization, Centropolis Accelerator, uh, as well as Lean Rocket Lab, an organization out of Jackson that's focused on uh, supporting small to medium-sized manufacturers and especially partnering closely with the Jackson Area Manufacturing Association. Um, so what is, you know, Industry 4.0? Um, you know, for many of you, you may already know this pretty well. Um, and it's, you know, for others, it's been a little bit confusing to understand what this, this uh, term and uh, the technologies that are in this kind of wave of innovation really mean uh, to individual manufacturers. Um, this is a pretty commonly understood um, chart of the definition of I, I-10, where it's, you know, first introduction of mechanization and steam power were used in manufacturing facilities to bring about efficiencies. And then industry 0.20 is when we were getting into first time mass production and assembly line uh, type of operations using electrical energy instead of steam power only. Um, and that brought a wave of innovation into the manufacturing environment. Um, and then I-3.0 is really the introduction of automation, robotics, computers, and electronics in a way to also bring about uh, production efficiencies in ways we've never seen before. Um, I-4.0 is including cyber facilities, uh, physical systems, Internet of Things, um, networking machines to people, and uh, bringing about, uh, you know, innovation and operations that will improve throughput, reduce downtime and equipment. Um, and lower cap acts and operating acts in a way maybe we've never seen before. So there's a lot of attention on this, of course. Um, and with any, you know, wave of innovation, you know, organizations like us that have an economic development mission 
are really looking for how do we take advantage of uh, this wave of innovation and attract some of these best in class technology companies to our, our state. And then also making sure that they uh, these technologies get integrated with our existing base of manufacturers so they become more efficient. And what's really been driving this is, and this is an example of a study that was put together by IEDC. Um, and it, it gets quite alarming when you look at it. It was really taking a look at all, when you look at the I4O uh, technologies that are out there and their likely um, implementation into a wide variety of industries, not just manufacturing, but healthcare and other industries, which human jobs are susceptible to being um, rendered irrelevant. Um, and obviously would uh, have an impact on job loss in those um, sectors. And as you can see there, manufacturing is one um, that is most susceptible to being disrupted um, in the way of manual workers as we adopt these I-4O technologies. Now, there's a couple of ways of looking at this um, when we think about our long-term uh, prosperity um, if these technology or these jobs are going to go away, what will they be replaced with, right? And uh, just like we, we went through the I3O um, uh, wave of innovation, Michigan was actually uh, on the forefront of attracting a lot of the companies in robotics and system integrators and technology companies that have made our plants more efficient. And those are very high tech jobs. Sometimes we overlook that, you know, the robotic companies alone, FANUC, ABB, KUKA, and others. Uh, come out, uh, how many people they employ here in Michigan that design, engineer, uh, install, and maintenance um, these advanced, uh, you know, automation technologies on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's important that when we think about, you know, our economic future, uh, how do we attract these best-in-class I4O technology companies to make up for the, some of the job losses that we're going to see um, in the manufacturing sector. And one way we're trying to get at that is by launching this I4O accelerator and trying to attract best in class uh, I4O technology companies, no matter where they reside in the world. We already know that Michigan has an incredible base of manufacturers that would make um, a very attractive site for I4O tech, tech companies, whether they come out of Europe, South America, Asia, any other part of the world, certainly even within our um, domestic uh, you know, domain, uh, a lot of I4O technologies are born on the coast, Silicon Valley and, and, and whatnot. So we really wanted to create this program to attract these companies in and get them partnering with our Michigan manufacturers uh, to adopt the technologies and with the hope that we would also attract their businesses and uh, the resulting jobs of as they grow as businesses um, to support the manufacturing sector. So which I4O technologies are we focused on? Um, if you are following Industry 4.0, you'll see a lot of different um, definitions of what qualifies, but certainly anything in kind of next generation robotics and automation, cobots is an example of that, just next generation high flexible production systems, certainly the uh, use of industrial internet of things where you're equipping uh, all equipment in your plant with sensors and having real time uh, monitoring and control of those systems. Um, machine vision uh, systems, especially intelligent machine vision systems that can very accurately detect, um, you know, defects and parts uh, and safety issues is, is uh, an area of tremendous growth in uh, technology adoption. And then, uh, you know, use of, you know, advanced tools like augmented reality, virtual reality to improve uh, operational efficiencies, as well as advanced engineering materials added to manufacturing technologies. These are all areas that we're looking for innovation and trying to pipeline into the state. Um, but again, our intention is completely focused on economic development. So we want to attract these best in class companies here. Uh, but one of the ways we need to do that is, is not only connecting them to Michigan manufacturers um, with the hope that they're going to improve, you know, operational efficiencies and, and allow our manufacturers to be, uh, to have better margins, uh, reduce capital expenditures, operating expenditures, uh, to make them more globally competitive um, in the areas that they're um, focused on, but also to connect them to existing Michigan supply chain, value chain partners, those that are distributors of automation equipment, those that are system integrators, uh, suppliers of components, those that install, service, and maintain 
um, manufacturing equipment uh, because you know many of the companies we're working with might be in Israel, Germany. Um, it may not be easy for them to immediately set up operations in Michigan to service Michigan manufacturers. So we've been doing a very good job of connecting them to local supply chain partners. And if they really do have compelling technology, it's not only the technology companies that that thrive and grow and employ, but it's also our existing Michigan supply chain partners um, that are in that value chain. So, so to date, we've uh, had great success. We launched just about a year ago um, when Automation Alley made this public and we received uh, over 230 applications now from uh, 30 different countries. Uh, we have a portal online that you can view here and uh, obviously we'll make this presentation available uh, afterwards. And uh, on that portal lists a lot of the companies that we have vetted to have compelling technologies out of that 230 and that have uh, proven uh, for them to work in manufacturing facilities, uh, but maybe not widely adopted. Um, that may be of interest to, to you to consider in your own uh, plants and manufacturing facilities. Um, one way we make this uh, program attractive is we do take on Michigan manufacturing partners as corporate partners. And as you can see here, now we have um, 21 Michigan corporate partners that um, review some of the technologies that we vet and down select, uh, and then consider incorporating those technologies, you know, usually starting with pilots or demonstration projects uh, before they go enterprise wide with it. And uh, we've just in under a year, we've helped initiate uh, 12 pilots and demos with these Michigan manufacturing partners uh, and have roughly about 20 companies that were. I-40 tech companies from across the globe that we're putting active support and services into. Um, and we've also attracted two companies, one company from Brazil, Autaza, one company from Silicon Valley, uh, Invisible AI. By working through the accelerator, they we connected them with so many customers in Michigan, they realized they needed to have operations here. Um, we also have a seed fund where we can put investments in companies and we use that as another lure. It's not the main focus of this, Accelerator, obviously what we want to do is try to get the best in class technologies in the Michigan manufacturer's hands as a priority. But we do have a seed fund that um, is um, Automation Alley's uh, seed fund that can go into earlier stage companies um, that need uh, funding to help grow their business. Uh, the other thing that we're looking at uh, potentially launching here in partnership with the Manufacturing Growth Alliance is a pilot demo grant program. Now, we submitted a proposal and obviously it's uh, subject to that proposal being accepted, but um, it would be funding that would offset the cost of uh, piloting I-40 technologies in plants, uh, you know, specifically in small to medium sized manufacturing operations. So more to come on that, hopefully. So uh, I mentioned earlier that we, uh, we have corporate partners uh, that have um, manufacturing operations here in Michigan and uh, now 21 companies on board. And, and these consists of big companies like Magna, uh, Lear, Forcia, Whirlpool, as well as small to medium sized manufacturers like Orbitform, uh, FlexFab, TAC and others. Uh, and what they do is they lend their advanced manufacturing team, their uh, manufacturing operational efficiency team to evaluate some of the companies that we've down selected and then consider if they want to, uh, like I said, try to pilot demonstrate and use these technologies in their own plants to bring about efficiencies. Um, you'll be happy to know if you're interested in this, you know, reach out to us through Jennifer um, and uh, we can get you lined up at no cost to be involved in this program. So for us, again, it's more about helping manufacturers become efficient here in Michigan. So we don't want a sponsorship um, requirement to get in the way of that. So as you can see here too, on the corporate partner side, we also have uh, you know, distributors of automation equipment like Electromatic and Cuttinger, uh, who are corporate partners, you know, system integrators and robotic companies like Kamau, ITR, Stefanini. As these, um, you know, these I-40 tech companies, as I mentioned, uh, you know, need local partners to distribute, carry, install their products, bring into market. So I mentioned we have a seed fund. So we have a $1.3 million seed fund that is, um, you know, drive from Automation Alley that uh, is used to help support some of these companies and especially when they need uh, financial wherewithal to help support, um, you know, projects with Michigan manufacturing companies. 
<clears throat> so next, I'm going to um, talk a little bit about the um, I4O Accelerator and walk you through some profiles of I4O tech companies that we think are uh, rather practical uh, applications for most manufacturers, big and small. Um, some of these things are obviously dependent on your own individual operations and the need that you have for uh, efficiencies in certain areas, but um, they are technologies that are already largely proven or in demonstration um, processes with other manufacturers and uh, are more typical to some of the um, inefficiencies that you would see in just about any manufacturing plant trying to challenge those. So example here is a company by the name Autaza that I mentioned that we attracted from Brazil to uh, the US um, and set up operations here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. <clears throat> they have two unique technologies. One is um, uh, inspection system you see at the top there where they're using both cameras and lighting to very accurately determine a, um, any defects you would imagine in a uh, painting, uh, a paint booth operation. So there's quite a bit of rework that's done on things like fascias you see here that uh, cost money and time and effort. So being able to do that in situ and determine if there's uh, slight defects that aren't uh, common to the, the naked eye and then being able to go back and rework the part um, with why it's in situ can be very valuable. Uh, they also have a simulation software for anyone that's in the stamping um, that can accurately determine uh, if you may experience some flaws uh, in stamping well before you would cut the uh, stamping tools. So saving a lot of money, time, and effort and rework on tools. Uh, I should point out too, as I go through this, um, if anybody has questions or um, quite commonly as I present these people say, oh man, I have, this would be a perfect uh, <laughs> application for something I have in my own operation. You know, don't hesitate to use the chat function or reach out to me and Jennifer afterwards to say, hey, I would really like to learn more about this company and that technology, or I'd like to meet with them directly and, and we'll go out of our way to make an introduction to the company or provide more information. So here's another compelling technology. This is another company that we attracted from Silicon Valley to Michigan, Invisible AI. And we're seeing a lot of this use of vision systems, including stand, you know, standard off-the-shelf cameras and through unique, unique um, artificial intelligence um, software algorithms, being able to uh, program and train the system to determine, in this case, what is a good uh, manual assembly versus a um, bad manual assembly operation. So what it does is it, it trains in just less than five training cycles what a good assembly is by picking up different points on the individual's body um, and then uh, programs it. So when something is done out of order or you miss a component, um, it immediately notifies the worker and the manufacturing engineering staff, uh, central processing that uh, a mistake is made. And that avoids errors and avoids, you know, potential warranty issues downstream. Uh, so it's just a kind of next level of innovation of Pokey Oak airproofing system. And this has been um, proven in a number of uh, manufacturing facilities already. And you have a company like Capture More, and we do see innovation even from our home state here in uh, Michigan, uh, a company out of Ferndale that has um, developed kind of a really unique tracking system for tools. Um, so what's, what's great about this is just with a simple QR code and um, integration with an ERP and MRP system, uh, you can keep track of your tools no matter what they are, what type of tools, stamping, injection molding, the materials um, that they're made out of, steel, aluminum, zinc, kurtzite, um, as well as the status and condition of those tools. So their, their life expectancy, how many hits are left. Um, and uh, this is, you know, particularly, especially when you have, you know, tooling with suppliers, uh, importance to have this type of tracking and capability for tooling. Dan, quick, quick question for you. You know, some of the manufacturers that we talk with, many of them believe that industry 4.0 technologies are, are too expensive for them that, you know, you know, a lot of what you're sharing is, I mean, I, I, I'm thrilled about it. You know, I'm excited about it. But could you talk a little bit, um, whether it's now or at the end of your presentation, how accessibility, affordability of some of these uh, resources are in reach for small manufacturers. They're just not all priced for um, tier ones that 
um, that, that this is, is available to small small to medium manufacturers as well, whether that's now or later on, uh, yeah. whatever works for you. No, and, and, you know, a lot of these technologies, including, uh, you know, what I've shown, Autaza, Visible AI, uh, Capture More, are can be quite affordable. I mean, it's not too much to put QR codes and in, in, integrate the software into your system, right? And they have, you know, some affordable packages for small to medium-sized companies um, that is, you know, uh, per cost of, you know, tracking and monitoring individual uh, tools, of course. Invisible AI, there's there's not much prep time and programming time. Uh, kind of depends, you know, each each project they, they quote for a company, you know, is highly dependent on the operation and, and the amount of time they need to program it. But you'd be surprised how affordable some of these uh, implementations are, especially when you're using off-the-shelf cameras and you're just paying for a, a subscription of software. Um, and then, you know, but each each application, your point, Jennifer, I think is really important for companies to do a, a formal kind of, um, you know, return on investment analysis. You know, what's the cost to implement this uh, and in both capital expenditures and operating expenditures? And then offset the cost of that on, you know, if it, if it avoids, you know, uh, a manual assembly error in this case uh, that would normally result in scrap product, what's the value of that scrap product that, you know, ultimately uh, or warranty issues that you avoid by adopting this, uh, this capital expenditure operating expenditure, so. Yeah, and you reminded me too, Dan, um... MMTC, they're offering technology assessments under the state's Industry 4.0 initiative. So I'll include information on how um, manufacturers can access uh, that resource to maybe consider having a technology assessment done uh, with their manufacturing facility. And that's, that, that is no cost through MMTC. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. That, that was a recent commitment the Michigan Economic Development Corporation made with um, MMTC and very valuable. It's, it's designated for small to medium sized manufacturers um, and in, will uh, really help with industry 4.0 readiness um, assessments. So I know we have Scott Phillips in line with MMTC that's involved with that program too. So, um, so walking through a couple more of these just to give you an idea. And again, this is, you know, to Jennifer's point, a very affordable solution of monitoring what we call legacy machine tools. Uh, many manufacturing facilities, including certainly the manufacturing facility that I grew up in and working in my dad's machine shop, uh, had older machine tools, right? And nowadays too, anything that's older than maybe seven or eight years uh, does not really capture data on the equipment very well. Uh, and being able to accurately predict uh, downtime and do a better job of uh, preventative maintenance scheduling uh, can be accomplished very easily with low-cost sensors um, that you can plug into even older, you know, machine tools. So Parasense is a company, um, again, out of Michigan here that has these unique IIoT sensors uh, that will plug in and be able to keep track of, you know, voltage, current, uh, temperature on key items uh, like motors, uh, vibration on things like spindles, right? And then what's really unique is there's software that can do the data analytics to, to predict premature failure, right? If vibration uh, variability you're starting to see on a spindle, you can, you know, predict that you may have a spindle failure, um, for instance, and then plan for it. And that avoids downtime. Downtime results into... Uh, you know, costs for companies big and small. <clears throat> we're also seeing the adoption of um, scanning uh, in a way where you can actually create a digital twin of your manufacturing environment. And um, I, this is even for small to medium sized manufacturers have been pretty beneficial in saving a lot of time, energy and waste in, um, in uh, simulating how an individual work cell uh, works, not just an entire factory especially if you're looking at, hey, we just want to put a robot and integrate it into the, uh, this existing work cell or we want to add a material handling table and being able to um, develop a digital twin of that and look at how you would integrate that and test out ergonomics and throughput well before you actually go through the physical exercise of doing it. We're also seeing a lot of use of technology that supports standardized work procedures and 
big and small manufacturers. Uh, standardized work procedures are pretty standard. I used to create standardized work procedures for my companies in the back in the back in the day. And you know what I always was challenged with is I put these hundred page uh, work instructions together that nobody would read <laughs> that sat next to the work cell, right? So what we're seeing now is a digitization of that, um, as well as the ease of being able to find what you're looking for when you need it and at the time you need it. So Deepow is a company that um, you literally use a phone or a tablet and you can record um, the step-by-step -step procedures, whether it be uh, how to operate equipment, how to maintain and service equipment, uh, how to go through safety uh, training, that type of thing. You tape it. And then it immediately uses a um, unique <clears throat> algorithm to categorize, categorize each step so that you can literally call to your attention what you need. So let's say a standardized work procedure on how to install a robot, maintain and service a robot is usually 400 pages of standardized work instructions. You literally can pull up and ask, well, I'm just interested in servicing the stepper motor and it immediately pull up what you need immediately when you need it. Um, we're seeing a couple companies in this space that have already done this very effectively. Uh, Deepow is one. The other company out of Israel is Envego. Uh, what's unique about Envego compared to Deepow is Envego is uh, also voice command and voice response. So you can take any digitized work instructions and then uh, allow it to be accessed through a tablet, a workstation, a phone. And again, you could you know, verbally command, I'm looking for how to service this stepper motor on this robot, and it'll immediately pull up that information and also uh, speak back to you on what you need to do step by step. So even small to medium-sized manufacturers uh, need more effective ways of helping their uh, employees uh, quickly get to what they need to know, right? And save uh, and avoid the waste of time of searching. And safety as well, Dan. Yes. Yeah, using this for safety uh, uh, procedures and uh, and is uh, equally important, and and also what these companies have been working on as well. So, if you have an application for that, uh, I'm glad to help you reach out to them and get connected and see what they can do for you. Um, and I mentioned companies all over the world we've been working with. This company out of Turkey is taken aerial cameras and done a very good job of programming to help um, not only notify workers on the floor of any danger or safety issues, uh, including you know, notifying your central manufacturing uh, operations command if uh, someone's working in an area they shouldn't be working or they're in danger of getting hit by a for forklift, for instance. These are uh, all practical uses of, of you know, off-the-shelf hardware uh, with unique uh, software solutions to do a better job of, um, you know, safety uh, planning and safety notifications. Uh, the other area of um, innovation, and this is a real, what I would call I4O tech white space, uh, meaning an area that I think is going to solve a lot of problems for manufacturers, big and small, is the use of uh, intelligent vision systems, AI-enabled uh, vision systems, especially for being able to determine good part versus bad part. Um, so this is a company that just happens to be out of Michigan as well, that is a software engineering company involved in automotive and, uh, and uh, camera vision systems that developed their own unique tool that can very accurately uh, tell you in real time environment what a good part is versus a part that has a defect. Um, and some of these vision systems are getting to the point where they're far more reliable than manual inspection workers. I showed that chart at the top of the discussion. Some of the jobs that you can predict that will go away are manual inspection jobs and manual assembly jobs. Manual inspection, um, depending on the application, uh, can be uh, not very effective. Um, so, you know, having a, a camera enabled uh, smart trained system that can determine defects very reliably and correlate very, very well to uh, true defects are, are, are hitting the market and uh, being uh, very effective. And that can really help a lot of manufacturers with improving their, uh, their bottom line and operating expenditures. Um, and including on parts that have, that are difficult to detect. So I, I'm showing a metal part here and 
you know, being a machinist growing up my entire life, you know, there's several defects you can, you can have on a metal part. Uh, it could be out of tolerance. You could have, you know, warping um, issues. You could have burrs. You can have discolorization. You could have cutting path um, failures. And these systems are getting very good at detecting and training themselves on what not only is there a defect, but what type of defect. Uh, and then being able to help pull those parts out of line for, for further inspection or rework or, uh, you know, scrapping, for instance. Yeah, Dan, I, I, I know of a manufacturer over in the Muskegon area where they're, uh, you know, the quality control. Um, so they use the vision system for quality control because the big three, you know, there's, there's a small margin <laughs> of error in the parts that door handles that, that this manufacturer sends them. And so now they've, um, they're using the division system where their, their quality control is, is almost perfect now. And um, it's just been a, a true um, asset to the manufacturer to have the division the system in place to, to check quality. Yeah. And Jen, I'm glad you brought that up because it, it's more than just reducing manual inspection workers and, and improving operational um, expenditures. It's really avoiding, um, you know, bad product getting it out in the market, you know, where then you have returns and then a cost to your company where you have a warranty issue and um, you lose so, business Be you because know, that what, standard from the customer is is going up. Exactly. Um, and so as as the demands of the customer goes up, you know, the big three, just for as an example, you know, you have to fall in line with what those those new requirements are. And Dan, we have a question here, and I hope I'm not not too late in asking it. Um, so Scott, feel free to to chime in if if you need to. Uh, the question is for the firms that are outside of Michigan or the U.S. How would Michigan manufacturers engage with them? Do they have a sales and or application assistance presence or local partner already in place? So yeah, some of the I four O tech companies you're seeing are already here in Michigan. Those that are outside. Um, we've been putting them in direct contact and they have been uh, servicing them from, in some cases, from afar, right? Or just flying in to help put an introduction or a demonstration together. Um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, some, some of the companies we're helping, uh, especially in Europe, we've been identifying reps and distributors that will help carry their technologies and uh, install them and service them. So uh, we've had to go out of our, our way to find local partners in some cases, Scott, uh, to make sure that these compelling technologies, no matter where they are in the world, um, have uh, good channel partners uh, to service uh, the Michigan market. Okay, thanks. And then, um, you know, there's certainly a lot of others, you know, that, it, and I'll go through a few more. And uh, if anybody has questions on them, let me know. And, and some are truly software-based, but unique enough where I think they offer a lot of value. Um, Castor is a company out of Israel that has a really unique uh, software for determining which parts in a product are suitable for um, use of 3D printing and 3D printing materials. And there are some, there's been some attempts at this before with softwares. Uh, that will do a pretty good job of evaluating lead time and cost um, and based on volume. Um, but now you're seeing softwares like Castor that will also compare the strength of the material you need, right? Based on material specifications. And that's the most important, right? To see if, can I really change this part if it's low volume and start using 3D metal printing or 3D, you know, printing of ABS or, uh, and it comes down to the strength of those individual materials in 3D printing that obviously are not quite as strong as if you injection molded them, stamped, forged, casted, right? So uh, this, you just literally click and drag a 3D CAD file into the system and it gives you an immediate output. It's not meant to be a complete decision maker, but it's certainly a decision uh, assist for engineering teams. Um, also helps you evaluate not just, you know, 3D printing and added manufacturing of production parts, but obviously tooling and other things where it's more commonly used. And uh, more additive manufacturing technology uh, innovation too. This was actually a spinoff of the University of Michigan. 
and they've uh, identified a really unique way for printing conductive ink onto uh, a wide variety of materials, including polymers, thermal elastomers, um, glass even. So here you can imagine putting integrating antennas into uh, windows, into glass, and having electrical circuitry on the B side of an IP or a dash in a vehicle where you get rid of all the hard, uh, low voltage wiring. Um, so this is more of an innovation on a manufacturing process, but these are the types of things we'll see in our I4O accelerator that um, may be of value to some companies. Um, a lot of people have heard of the use of augmented reality and virtual reality in manufacturing facilities and why this may not be for all companies. We're starting to see this more widely adopted, um, including with small manufacturers. Uh, so this is where you would actually have like an augmented reality hardware set, and then you'd have an overlay of um, like of a piece of equipment to help with uh, operation assist. And uh, where it's more commonly used is even on serviceability. So a lot of times when, it, when a machine tool goes down, uh, you have to call the machine tool manufacturer. Sometimes you have to wait a few days before they can come out and service. So you can imagine having um, have them piped into an AR system where uh, you know the, the machine tool manufacturer can see what you're seeing and help you service it on site in, in a more immediate way. Again, reducing downtime. Exactly, reducing downtime. This is another company out of Michigan that's developed. Um, you know, we're starting to see the use of you know automated ground vehicles for not only material handling but also for loading and unloading machines, for bin picking and placing on. Um, you know, material handling equipment, uh, especially where you're um, trying to load and unload machinery where you might have hot parts um, or other activities. So, uh, and the, you know, wearables, right? There's a lot of innovation in wearables, uh, including in manufacturing facilities. This is a uh, company out of India that is developing um, uh, safety goggles, right? Work goggles. And what's unique about them is you have a camera embedded, as you can see there, and you, that allows you to take photos and videos uh, as well as uh, it also has audio capture. So this is particularly good for inspection jobs uh, where normally you would have a lot of you know, manual paperwork <clears throat> where you literally could take a photo, take a video and explain what you're seeing. And then it, it captures that information directly into a, a database for reporting. And then we're seeing this even for you know, smart hard hats and other smart wearables um, just to make it, you know, easier to get your job done. And then uh, I have here in the deck, Jennifer, that I'll share with, um, that we can share with your, your network um, and those that registered for today's event, a wide variety of other companies that we've been working with. <laughs> and uh, obviously don't have time to go through them all in the presentation today. But you see, you know, there's quite a bit of, um, you know, next generation vision systems for inspecting and improving procedures, uh, as you see here with LenCode and Melt Tools. Um, and then we have, you know, innovations in um, using uh, intelligence to help with uh, safety analytics uh, in a plant. So this is actually trying to identify in some cases when a uh, individual may not be wearing the protective gear that they should be wearing um, or are in uh, not in compliance with certain safety procedures in a manufacturing uh, environment. So in each case, you'll see here too, that some of these are softwares uh, that, are, that are used and ability for uh, platforms to be used directly by the worker, uh, either in uh, tablets or on your iPhone specifically to be able to communicate safety issues, quality issues, um, need for tooling to be delivered to a remote workstation. Um, and then in each case, some of these companies uh, are mature companies. Some of these companies are um, still younger companies and not exactly early stage startups, but later stage startups. So where they do have, um, you know, investment uh, our post revenue and are we're willing to give us information on their customers. We added it here so you have an, an idea of how mature the company is and where they've had success uh, in implementing their 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 uh, products and services. 
That's anything from software that supports PPAP uh, to uh, you know, portals that help you identify um, you know, prototyping and get quote, quick quoting um, you know, to companies that uh, like AI Robots that does a good job of monitoring robots and predicting potential failure. Um, pretty deep list. This is at least 40 or so companies that are represented in this presentation that we'll make available. I went through the slide deck uh, the other day, Dan, and I was very impressed with um, not only the, the number of companies um, that you have detailed in this slide deck, but the type of companies and the innovation that's that's coming forward. It's mm -hmm. it's um, it's exciting and it's also almost can be overwhelming, right? You're like, oh, I, I, you know, I can just see manufacturers, you know, on the call today and those that will watch. Um, later this week, you know, saying, well, I'd, I'd like that, I'd like that, I need to find out more about that. You know, where, how critical is it for manufacturers to just become more familiar with and start looking at um, Industry 4.0 in their facilities? How, it, can you talk a little bit to the sense of urgency to, to just start thinking about it? Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, and I grew up in manufacturing, right, and and working with my dad's small manufacturing operations over the years. And, uh, and then later on, I became a consultant to manufacturers big and small. And, you know, I saw kind of the impact that, you know, the 3.0 revolution had on robotics and, and uh, automation it had on a lot of manufacturers at, at that time. And those that, you know, really were kind of hoping it would go away <laughs> and that they wouldn't have to worry about you know, many, many of them had to shutter operations, as you know, they just couldn't um, keep up. And, and what happens is the companies that do adopt this, right, as well as just lean manufacturing techniques um, and quality, you know, standards, you know, some of the things that MMTC, uh, you know, instructs and trains on as well. You know, if you didn't adopt these things, you know, you missed out on the margin improvements that uh, your company was potentially able to benefit from. And then that, those margin benefits, you know, enable you to not only be long-term sustaining as a company, but allows you to be more competitive. So, you know, what we're seeing, especially now, and this has happened really over the last 20 years with low-cost countries and, you know, the China factor, um, we're competing against the world in Michigan, right? Um, and every dollar uh, of improvement, uh, every day of throughput improvement uh, we can achieve as manufacturers are going to make us more competitive when we quote out our business um, and uh, and allow us to to take home margins that make it worth running a small medium-sized manufacturer uh, you know beneficial uh, for the owners and the, and the employees so I think yeah and if you're in that position you really have to pay attention to that one thing I like about <clears throat> having um, us involved here is why there's great programs, including what MMTC is offering in the way of assessments. Sometimes it's hard to uh, really know which I4O technologies to implement. And sometimes it helps to have some of these, you know, profiles of technologies to kind of help people connect the dots, right? Because you hear all this great stuff and then until you see, oh, I could see this technology working for me. I could see it working for this exact work cell, this exact problem we have. Um, so you really can't get too much information in my opinion, you know, uh, I, I couldn't encourage manufacturers enough to, um, to really be, uh, taking part in a lot of industry 4.0, uh, conferences, events, uh, networking sessions, MMTC produces a lot of those automation alley regularly has I4O, um, sessions. A lot of these are free, no cost <laughs> to get involved. Um, and that's where you're going to learn about these technologies. And this, we're going to have the opportunity to uh, get connected, you know, by MMTC, by Automation Alley, by our organization to some of these, um, these innovators, and then uh, have an opportunity to try to test and demonstrate it, see if it makes sense for your company. Um, and if it does, obviously, uh, there's a benefit and an upside there. 
Dan, should we open it up to, to questions now? Or do you, would yeah, you like sure. to share more with the companies? Okay, just wanted to uh, make sure that the participants um, on the, the, the webinar today, feel free to, again, put in the chat box any questions or um, you should all be unmuted and yourself muted, but I'm gonna double check that here in just a second. Um, feel free to ask any questions um, you have of, of Dan. And I'm just going to pause a second to see if any questions come forward. Otherwise, I have a few more questions for you. Hey, Scott. Yeah. Hey, hey, Dan uh, and Jennifer, uh, this has been really good. One question I have is you, you covered a lot of really um, innovative companies here doing interesting things. And like you just said a minute ago, it's a little hard to sometimes map them to needs and applications. Is, is part of your effort you're doing... Um, do you think there's a possibility of creating like a grid of some kind or a, some sort of a mapping device to say, you know, th this is the company and here's the industries they focus on and here's the applications. And I, I don't know exactly what that would look like, but somehow whittling it down and, and putting it into some structure that we could know where to best connect them. Well, I think uh, what, what you're, um, what you're referring to, I think, Scott, is like uh, would be a great tool to be developed by Automation Alley, MMTC, maybe even in conjunction with us, right? Because really, you can organize these by software or by hardware or by vision systems or whatever. But what it really doesn't map very well to, and I think you were hinting to it, is the problem it solves, right? right. <laughs> like part inspection. Okay, part inspection, there's these wide range of technologies that support that, right? Um, so, you know, if we're talking about things like a real problem that a lot of people are trying to address is uh, called bin picking, right? So this is a uh, manual inspection or a, a manual job today is to pick apart from a pallet or pick apart from a bin, place it into the machine or place it in the material handling. And the technology out there, um, is just now getting around to being able to have the right vision systems that you could put on robots that would enable you to do that well, right? That would bring about efficiencies. So, you know, it's as much about categorizing that, not by technology, but by problems that you're trying to solve is the point I'm trying to make. Yep. And uh, I think that that would need some work um, by those that are on the front line trying to uh, bring these technologies to market and helping manufacturers assess their readiness. If you have a question, I'm kind of watching everyone's microphone. Dan, do you have a question? No. Okay. I've got one. Um, you know what? Let's say uh, you're you're an average, not that one exists, but you're an average, you know, smaller, mid-sized manufacturer, and you really want to get engaged. What is the best point of entry? What's the like preferred path, or the one that you think they'll get the most value out of engaging with you all? Well, from the Industry 4.0 Accelerator perspective, I, I would have them get in touch directly with us. And then what we do with every manufacturer that wants to come on board and work with us in a kind of corporate partner role, like I said, there's no cost. Uh, although there is a cost of time, of course, right? So what we like to do in, is we, when we're onboarding a, a manufacturer, including we have small, medium-sized manufacturers that are part of our, our list of corporate partners. We actually um, have an onboarding session where we learn about their operation. Um, we learn about um, what type of equipment they use, what type of parts they make, you know, what type of quality issues they're having or throughput issues they're having or downtime issues they're having or, you know, operational efficiencies in general. And that alerts us to, okay, based on what you're telling us, we know that these I, I for O technologies fit. These others don't based on what you told us, right? Um, so it, it really requires some back, back and forth um, to help us understand uh, which technologies to put in front of you. Because uh, one thing I pride our team on is we're all, we all have manufacturing background, right? Like I've been manufacturing my whole life. So I can, I understand these technologies, and understand how they can be applied in a manufacturing environment. Um, but I need to know that that small to medium sized manufacturers manufacturing environment, what it is, are they, are they working with plastics? Are they working with metals? Are they doing injection molding? Are they doing stamping? You know, 
all those things help us do a better job of matchmaking. And if we're doing a good job, we are only bringing them the technologies that matter that are going to align more with their needs. And so far, I think we're doing a pretty good job of that. So. But, you know, Dan, to more directly answer your question, too, absolutely. I mean, put them directly in touch with me if you think uh, they're a company that would like to, to get more involved in the accelerator. So and we will talk to them, make sure they know what they're uh, committing to and, uh, you know, hopefully add them to this list. One thing I might want to just clarify and confirm, I see some uh, companies on that list that aren't necessarily in southeast Michigan. Is geography going to be a challenge or an issue or how do you No, they, they can be anywhere in michigan obviously whirlpool is in the west side of the state some of these companies have plants all over the state um so i think tac flax have there in jackson um that they came through lane rocket lab uh group the other thing we could need some help with is you know anyone that's a distributor of manufacturing equipment or tooling um those that are system integrators, like we don't make the robots, but we we program them, we install them, we service them. Those are also uh, companies we want involved in this program. Like I said, because what we're seeing is technologies that are just a, a really good uh, fit, but they don't have, you know, they might be in Israel, they might be in Germany, you know, even if they're on the west side of the country, they need someone to be here. And then maybe they can't fully commit to that right now. Uh, until they generate enough business. So, uh, and again, if, if the, the, the technology is compelling, it's going to be those companies that uh, benefit, right? Because they're, you know, they're, they're built into the equation and um, electromatic and cutting are an example of that. There's distributors and installers of automation equipment, right? Dan, we mentioned a couple times um, in our conversation about MMTC and the technology assessments that are available at no cost. Strongly recommend, um, you know, manufacturers to reach out to MMTC office and, and have a conversation about those assessments. We also talked a little bit about Automation Alley. Um, you mentioned them a couple times, and I know that they have a role in the industry 4.0 initiative that was recently announced. What what role does, do you mind sharing uh, the role that M yeah. um, Automation Alley has related to the state's industry 4.0? Yeah, and if I trip over this, maybe Scott can jump in because- Or I can. Uh, they're, they're, Automation Alley is really working uh, as a team with MMTC and the assessments. Mm -hmm. uh, they're really kind of, Automation Alley is kind of doing a first cut of, because they have such a large membership of determining who's well qualified for an I-40 assessment. And then MMTC is in, engaging in and actually executing on that assessment as well as the recommendations that come out of that assessment. Um, and then of course, Automation Alley is already kind of, um, you know, the knowledge center with a lot of I-40 conferences like Integrate. They do these tech takeovers where they feature a, a new I-40 technology and case studies of their implementation, lessons learned. Um, they do a regular annual report on the subject there. Uh, uh, so I don't know, Scott, if I missed anything there, specifically on the assessments and how they're to be uh, applied for, reviewed, and executed on. No, I think you did good, Dan. I think that's, that's a good explanation. And as I understand it, yep. So in my email um, out to the, the group, I will make sure to include information about the state's industry 4.0 initiative that was recently launched, contact information uh, for MMTC, uh, this slide deck, as well as the recording to our conversation today. So uh, before I close out, are there any additional questions that we wanna ask Dan? Dan, we took up the whole time. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad there's a lot of interest in it. And, uh... Like I said, anyone that's interested, uh, that's on the phone, if, if you saw a company and a technology there, you're like, man, I would like to learn a lot more about this, maybe get connected to that company to see if I can evaluate its use in our operations, you know, reach out to me directly or Jennifer, mm -hmm. and uh, we will uh, make that happen. Fantastic. Well, thanks again, Dan, for the conversation. We truly appreciate you spending time with us to, to talk about Industry 4.0, the exciting things 
that you're doing, doing with the accelerator. Uh, just really ap appreciate the conversation. And thank you uh, for those who joined us today. And I look forward to connecting with many of you in the near future. So, thank you. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Bye-bye.